So if we go back to our home screen again, we've got sound banks. So as well as the presets that come with Astrolab True Analog Lab Pro or the Connect app, you can download additional sound banks, either plenty of free ones available, and you can also purchase additional banks. Next along, we've got playlists. So in here, I've just created a couple of playlists based on, like I found some interesting drum sounds and also some, when I wanted to plug in the microphone to process the sound, I came across some interesting vocoder patches. So I put them in a playlist that I can access. So to show you that in action, I can select my playlist and within your playlist, you can organize songs. So currently I've only got one song here, but you could set up a number of different songs. And then with each song, say if it is an actual song, you could have, yeah, different, all your different patches for the different sections in the song that you want to play. So then when you uh, go, let me see, I'll go back to my, my drums playlist. And yeah, I'll load this one. So that when you open this playlist, you can see that the preset types have changed now. So your first 10 presets that you have in this playlist, you can have up to 127 presets in a playlist will be accessible from your, your, your preset type buttons here. So rather than having to you to go menu diving in the middle of a song, you can just be playing your but this one, this one sounds like the first one, but this one has a bass split on it as well. So, so I'll go back to my home menu again. And then the last option there is your settings menu. And in the settings menu, you've got, you've got a general page and in there you can set the internal tempo. You've got a limiter. You can access a USB drive and import playlists from that. With the keyboard, you've got Wi-Fi connectivity and Bluetooth connectivity. So currently I've got the Astrolab connected to the computer using a USB cable but you can also connect to the computer using Wi-Fi. And you've got Bluetooth functionality as well, which you can use to play audio from, say, maybe your phone and have it come out the outputs of Astrolab. Now, you can't process the sound. If you wanted to do that, you'd have to plug it into the actual audio inputs. But it's useful for, like, you know, jamming along with a sound or if you have a prepared soundscape or layer that you want to add into your performance, you can play it from a Bluetooth compatible device options for changing your MIDI in and out so so you can set up your parts to respond to different MIDI channels different keyboard channels going into our controls I'm not a particularly good keyboard player so I've set the keyboard velocity which is has 12-bit resolution I've set it to heavy so it's slightly not as dynamic as it could be uh, after touch sen sensitivity as after touch I've left it linear and if you want to you can turn off the LEDs above the keyboard I leave them on you do have the option to turn them off but when they're on, they show you, depending on the patch that you're working on, they show you where the split is. So we can see that one preset is assigned to this part and the other section is assigned to this part. If you were, say, you had a scale turned on, I'll go into my scale options and, yeah, I'll set up a different scale. Say we go to major, go into, say, mixolydian. You can see now that it's above the notes that are actually in that scale. There's an LED illuminated and the notes that are outside of that have the LED off. Going into our pedals menu, we looked at this a bit already. You can invert the polarity of the sustain and the expression pedal and the auxiliary one and two, and you can select what they actually address. And then we have a utility menu, which again, this is the function where I said you can select whether when you select a new preset, whether you want it to load immediately or you want to click to get the preset to load. There's a tick sound that you can turn on and off. So when you're turning your encoder to get notification when you've made a move, you can have it make a sound. I've got that turned off. And you can show your CPU and it shows the version of the particular firmware that you're on. In terms of CPU, it's important to note that the polyphony of some of the patches is limited to avoid any dropouts. So a lot of the, you know, the monophonic bases, the Buchle Easel, the MS20, they all just have their mono, so they just have one note polyphony. A lot of patches like the pianos and the keyboards, organs, they have up to 48 note polyphony. Some of the synthesizers, the polyphony is reduced and it's reduced even more if they're, you're using unison mode. And depending on some of the synths that you use, say something like pigments, if it's using like a very CPU intensive 
engine within the actual sound, the polyphony can be reduced even further. So we'll talk a bit more about some of the filtering options that you have to work on in order to access the particular sound that you're looking for fast. You can also use Analog Lab Pro to help you do that. So we'll switch over and have a look at that because sometimes so it's easier to view maybe what's going on in Astrolab. So in Astrolab, you can do the similar type of filtering to this where you can select a bass type that you want to see more. And you can set up your filtering to be from instruments. So all of these instruments are within Astrolab. And you can, if you want a particular style, now the style filter option is not available in Astrolab. So that's sometimes why it can be useful to use either the Astrolab Connect app or Analog Lab Pro. So I've got various other characteristics that you can actually choose from. Or if you're looking for your presets within a particular bank that you've loaded, you can access them here. You can also access by designer, or you can switch on user and just turn off base. I've only actually got one user preset here at the minute. So coming back to the instrument, we'll just select a particular, we'll call up a particular instrument. And we'll have a look at some of the controls that we have here. I've selected the matrix 12 here. So you can see that the preset type buttons that contain patches that are in that category have been highlighted. So there's no electric piano or organ types. So when I, if I'm looking for keys, that are in the matrix shelf. I just hold this down for a second. And now it's actually gone into my key section so I can browse keys presets from the matrix 12, or I can use the previous and next. Currently, this is only showing me the image on the preset screen here. It's showing me a single matrix 12. I can adjust the brightness. For a lot of the patches, the modulation wheel will also affect the sound. Just giving some vibrato there, but on other patches, it might be rooted to the filter or some sort of modulation. Next along, we've got timbre, which is often complementary to brightness. Next along, we have time, which is often related to envelopes within the presets, so attack and decay. So quite a short decay there. So longer decay. And movement is a general term for, it might add some modulation or affect LFO speeds. Let's have a listen to another patch. Sometimes the settings can be subtle, but let's try and find an example where it's more obvious. Yeah. All these presets that I've been choosing here, they're all just single instrument presets. I felt like I wanted to add another layer, another texture to that. I could select part two. And now it's telling me here, add a part for two. So I select this and it takes me into where I can choose types, instruments, artists, similar to what was available in the home screen. Some of my liked presets, sound banks. So I'll go into so maybe I want to add like a piano to it. So I'll go into my types and I'll hold down keys rather than if I tap keys once, it will take me into all the keyboard patches. But if I hold down, I will get more filtered options. So yeah, maybe something with bells and we can browse for something that might work. If I was happy with that, I just press OK. And now you can see the image has been updated to show me the Matrix 12 and another keyboard. 
So currently the LEDs across the top of the keyboard, they're all a single color. And all the rings around the macros are all a single color, which means that these two presets are functioning as a multi. So it's like a layered sound on top of each other. But the part buttons do show different colors. So what I can do is set up a split. Very simple. Just hold down the split point and immediately by default, it will do it to C3. But if I wanted to, I could change that. If it was like a bass part where I just needed the first octave, I could bring it down to there. So I've got. And then I've got the sort of plucked bell sound on top of it on the upper half of the keyboard. If I wanted to, I could also invert them. So if I decided, okay, I like the matrix 12, but I want it on my right hand and I want the other part on my left hand. So now we have the more bell type sound on the first octave where we've got the matrix higher up. As mentioned, there's a lot of functionality available by using the shift key. You can see that under the part and the split buttons, we can we can edit a particular patch. So if I wanted to edit the first part, change the sound or change maybe some of the, yeah, change the instrument or basically filtered. Is he looking at, I'm looking at a filter screen here that gives me access to other groups of sounds. With the split one, I can go in there and rather than manually setting the split point, I could go into a particular part and set the range of that. And I can also set, yeah, we looked at the screen before where I can set various options where if I want to transpose a part different to the other part, or if I want to turn pitch bend on and off or some of the expression pedals, I can do that from within this page. But because we have a multi-part here, by holding down shift and adjusting the volume, it will adjust the volume for both parts. Whereas if I wanted to edit the volume for a, an individual part, I would just hide or hold down, do a long press on the key, and that would bring up the volume. And then I can use the collar on the encoder to adjust the volume. So you can change the volume of one part relative to the other. 